that, um, I am going to turn it over to Joanna to begin our conversation about garlic. And again, welcome and thanks for joining us. Okay. I am unmuted. Thank you, Liz. Um, yes, I'm going to be talking about growing garlic in zone seven. So we can go to the first slide, please. Okay, I thought I'd just start with a few garlic basics. And um, first, just begin with the, the, uh, the obvious question, what is garlic? You know, people think of garlic as an herb, but it's actually uh, a vegetable that we use as a spice. And to get even more botanical than that, it's an allium. And that is a uh, genus of bulbous plants that uh, also includes onions, leeks, and chives. Um, so why should we as home gardeners even bother to plant garlic? It's so easy to find in every single grocery store along with all the other alliums. And we can even find it in a jarred form when it's already peeled. And a lot of people think this is wonderful. It's great and so convenient. However, just as an aside, not this guy, Anthony Bourdain once said that this jarred version is vile spew. And if you're too lazy to peel fresh garlic, you don't deserve to be eating garlic. You know, maybe you agree with that, maybe not. But we grow garlic because we love to eat it <clears throat> a lot. Uh, in fact, it is the second most popular allium grown in the world. And we eat about 10 million tons of garlic every year. And that takes a lot of land, something like 2.5 million acres of land. Most of our garlic is grown in China, followed by Korea and India, and the US only grows about 3% of the world's garlic. But we're here today to tell you that we can do better. Garlic is easy to grow in zone seven, but you have to follow a few rules. And the first thing you need to do is decide what sort of garlic to grow. There's basically two categories of garlic. There's hard neck garlic, and then there's soft neck garlic. Hard neck garlic is more cold hardy. So it's grown up north a lot. Um, it's uh, the, uh, the bulbs are bigger, but there are fewer cloves. Um, it lasts about four to six months, depending on how uh, well you observe the rules about storing it. Um, and it produces scapes. And scapes are uh, flower stalks uh, that shoot up when the hard neck garlic is uh, growing and um, they're edible, but we'll talk about that later. And then the other kind of category of garlic is soft neck garlic. This is less cold hardy. Um, you get a ton of cloves in a bulb. It lasts longer than the hard neck varieties. It uh, can keep up to a year if it's stored properly. You don't generally see scapes, um, but you can braid the leaves that shoot up. Um, uh, when you see braided uh, braids of garlic, it's generally soft neck garlic that you're seeing. Okay, so in general, um, this is not a hard and fast rule, but in general, in zone seven, soft neck garlics tend to do better. Uh, it puts up with our warmer temperatures, the humidity, the shorter winters that we have here. However, um, several hard necks do great, and we'll talk about those. Um, so within the soft neck category, there are only two varieties, artichoke or silver skin. And each of those have cultivars. And some good ones to keep in mind for zone seven are Inchileum, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Inchileum Red, Red Totch, New York White Neck, and Idaho Silver Skin. Hard neck garlic has many more varieties, 11. And a few good ones there are Purple Stripe, Porcelain, and Rocambole. And these have many, many cultivars, um, dozens and dozens. But some good ones for Zone 7 include German Extra Hardy, Chestnut Red, Music, and Spanish Roja. And whether it's hard neck or soft neck, um, you know, there's just different flavors for all of these uh, garlics. And some are super bold and some are more subtle. So you really just need to, you know, figure out by, ex by tasting them which ones you prefer. Okay, so where to find 
garlic seed. We talk about garlic seed, but you're actually buying a bulb, not a traditional seed. Um, and you should look for those uh, either online, online sources or in garden stores. Or we'll talk about this later too. You can save garlic from your previous crop to plant in the subsequent crop. Um, what you don't wanna do is um, purchase garlic from the grocery store and then try and plant those, bulb, those cloves because that is typically treated and not meant to produce you know, a subsequent crop. When to plant? Uh, best to plant in the fall. So coming right up, mid-October is the earliest really, through about mid-December. And um, you need to plant it in the fall for next year because garlic takes eight to nine months to come to a harvest point. Um, if you plant it too early, like you wanna jump the gun and plant it in September or even in early October, um, your plant is gonna produce a lot of leaves early and these could get damaged in the winter and then you'll end up with smaller garlic bulbs. However, if you don't get to it in the fall, um, you, you can plant it in the spring, but if you do get yourself in that situation, you need to refrigerate the garlic first, at least for eight weeks, um, because garlic needs a period of vernification, which is a cold period, in order um, to get good bulbs. So don't despair if you don't get it in in the fall, but it's definitely far, far better to do it then. Uh, where to plant it. You'll need a sunny location and you'll need neutral soil, 6.5 to 7. Um, and how do you know, you know what your soil pH is? You need to get your soil tested to know whether it's right as is for garlic or whether you need to amend it. And if you do need to amend it, you should follow the, um, the, uh, the report that you get along with your soil test and uh, do what it says. Um, and you should always, before you plant, add compost or rotted manure to the soil. Um, because it helps with the drainage and good drainage is so important for growing garlic. Um, so even if you, if you have raised beds, that's even better. How to plant garlic. So you have your bulb of garlic and you need to separate the bulb into cloves right before you planting. You plant, not sooner or it'll dry out. You need to leave the skin on the cloves. And you need to choose the largest cloves from the largest bulbs you can find. Um, plant the cloves point up about an inch to an inch and a half deep and you want to make sure the soil covers the entire clove. You want to space your cloves six inches apart and then you want to space your rows 18 inches apart to allow these plants to um, you know reach their full maturity. And then you want to uh, mulch with either grass cl clip clippings from your uh, Lawn mowing, they're excellent, or you can mulch with um, straw mulch. And then your garlic will grow. It'll uh, start growing uh, in the winter and beginning in the spring. However, you need to really start paying attention to it and make sure it gets consistent uh, moisture throughout the rest of the growing period. And you wanna pull the mulch away from the base of the plants, but you need to make super sure that you keep the bed well weeded because garlic hates competition. It doesn't want to compete with weeds and weeds can give it a lot of competition. So keep the weeds out. Um, and then you could fertilize a few times in the early spring with a fertilizer that is, um, has a good high nitrogen content. If you're growing the hard neck varieties, you um, will start to see flower stalks shoot up, escapes, as I mentioned earlier, and you wanna remove those as soon as you notice them. If you don't, um, their presence is gonna drain the plant of its energy and it'll uh, compromise the bulb size, um, but don't throw them away. A lot of people will clip them and throw them away. They are edible and they are delicious. I, I chop them up raw in salads. Uh, you can saute them and uh, they're really wonderful. So a little bonus from your, your garlic crop. Um, when to harvest garlic, uh, you look for the what's happening in the lower leaves. When the lower third of the leaves turn brown, which around here is usually sometime in July, depending on when you planted it, um, then it's time to dig up your garlic. And uh, you'll want to uh, uh, be mindful of the bulbs that are underground. So it's best to dig with a uh, uh, pitchfork and um, lift them out gently. Um, 
And if you harvest them at the appropriate time, uh, you'll have beautiful, easy to clean garlic bulbs. A lot of people say, well, I'll just let them, leave them in the ground a little longer and they'll uh, get bigger. Uh, but that generally doesn't happen. Um, bulbs left in the ground too long can rot and then you end up with nothing. And then garlic needs a curing period. So how do you cure garlic? Um, you want to spread them out, uh, the bulbs on a, out in a single layer on either a wire screen or a wooden sh uh, shelf um, in a shaded, dry, well-ventilated area. So for a lot of people, that's their basement. Temperature is important. You want to store it above 50 degrees, um, uh, but below 68 degrees. If it's too warm, your garlic's going to dry out and it won't keep as long. Um, you need to cure it at least four weeks before you cut off the stems. And curing is a means of helping to extend the uh, shelf life of the bulb. And if you really want to do a great job, hang your garlic and that ensures uh, good air circulation. And then you can think about replanting it. Um, you've harvested probably in July, so the planting season is coming up in October to mid-December. So you want to save, uh, if you're, you're going to replant from the crop that you grew, you want to save the biggest bulbs and uh, you want to uh, remove the biggest cloves and plant those. And uh, again, mid to late fall. And if you do this year after year, your garlic will just keep getting better and better, you will be growing a super crop. And I just thought I'd leave you with another garlic quote, this one from uh, Leo Buscalia. There are many miracles in the world to be celebrated. And for me, garlic is the most deserving. So that is what I have, except to leave you with some resources to, uh, uh, to explore further. Okay. All right. Do we have do we have any questions for Joanna? Not yet. All right. Okay. Um, then why don't we go ahead and proceed with Lisa Kurtz on companion planting with garlic? Thank you, Joanna. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see in the chat. Um, oh, new question. We do have a question. Okay. Joanna, do you have a personal favorite garlic type? Um, you know, I grew a hard neck this year and it was wonderful. It was a purple stripe. I don't remember the name of the cultivar, but um, it's been fantastic. So don't be afraid of trying the hard neck, I would say. Um, but no, there are so many types and I'm rather new at growing garlic myself. This is only in my second year. Um, and like I say, that purple stripe, was wonderful. How did the flavor of that hard neck vary from the soft necks you usually plant? Was it stronger or is it just a different flavor? It is stronger, yes. A lot of the, gross, the uh, grocery store garlic that you'll buy is um, a soft neck garlic. And I noticed that the one I grew was much bolder in flavor, but that's fine by me. In fact, we had some last night, I made a, uh, a bruschetta, a tomato bruschetta with tomatoes from my garlic, my garden, basil from my garden, and garlic from my gar garden, and it was fabulous. I think I saw another question in the chat. Let's see. Oh, how about growing garlic in containers? I have never tried that. Um, I would imagine if you're going to do that, you need to have a pretty deep container, first of all. You know, garlic um, takes some room and you can't plant it very close. I mean, you'd have to have a pretty big container because you need to have that spacing. Um, so I, 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 I can't imagine the size container you'd need to plant, you know, a fair garlic crop, but I suppose it's possible. Again, make sure, you know, if you, your soil has good drainage and um, the spacing, give it a go. Okay, thank you. I think that's all the questions now. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, Lisa, over to you. Excellent, thank you. So my name is Lisa Kurtz and I'm gonna to talk to you about companion planting. And you may have the question of what exactly is that? So I'd like to say that it's similar to having good human companions um, who improve your life because maybe they complement your skills or your habits or make your life better or easier. And companion planting is sort of the same thing. Um, it's based on improving soil quality, uh, also attracting beneficial insects for pest management and providing resources or help that the companion plant can't produce on its own, both for garlic and from garlic. Um, it's also a great way to improve the health of your garden because not only can it help you keep away some unwanted pests, but you won't need as much herbicide or pesticide if you use companion planting so it's better for the environment and better for pollinators uh, so you can have more pollination and just help the environment in general. And one of the things that garlic does is it accumulates sulfur from the ground that acts as sort of a naturally occurring fungicide, uh, which can help nearby plants in disease prevention. So the question would be what plants might be uh, a good companion for uh, planting and so if we go to the next slide, I can tell you that. So one thing would be uh, fruit trees. If you plant uh, garlic around the base of your fruit trees, oh, I think maybe we skipped, oh, I think we skipped one maybe, or, or I didn't read where I should have. Can you go back one slide? There we go, sorry. So some of the common things that garlic or allium sedatum uh, are, have for benefits is the odor deters a lot of pests, both animal and insect. So uh, some of the pests are aphids, Japanese beetles, spider mites, and also rabbit, squirrel, and deer. Now it's not gonna be 100%, but it will help. Um, it also attracts beneficial insects like ladybugs, which eat the aphids and some of the mites, uh, wasps and butterflies, which help for pollination. And then again, the fungicide component. And it doesn't compete for nutrients with the companion plants either because they pull up different things from the soil or with the garlic being planted lower than some of the other plants might be, their roots may not pull up from the same level. And so if we could go on, next slide, please. Thank you. So if you plant uh, garlic around the base of your fruit tree, it'll help repel uh, some of the animals like the rabbits and squirrels and deer because it also pulls up some of that odor, the sulfur, and it uh, emits through the, the tree, but it doesn't seem to affect the taste of the fruit, which is great. And because of that natural sort of fungicide that it creates from the sulfur, it helps control some of the fungus that might harm your crop, uh, either the leaves or the fruit itself. For tomatoes and peppers, garlic will deter aphids and mites and fungus. Next slide. And some more com com good companions are in the cabbage family. So the cabbage, the broccoli, the cauliflower, kale and kohlrabi, They'll repel uh, cabbage moths as well as sl uh, slugs and snails that like to eat the leaves. Um, for beets, it repels the snails and Japanese beetles, carrots, the aphids and beetles, eggplant, snails, and white flies. And for strawberries, it repels the spider mites. Next, please. And so for some uh, ornamental plants like roses, roses love garlic because roses tend to attract aphids and Japanese beetles and snails and they tend to get some fungus sometimes and garlic lures ladybugs which will eat the, some of those bugs and it also helps with the control of the fungus and there are a lot of uh now granted you might not want to have the roses that are right up close to your house maybe you'll want to use something different because you want to get the lovely scent of the roses without perhaps the scent of the garlic but if especially if you have a, a shrub rose or something near uh, your perimeter where you're gonna be more likely to get some of the deer climbing close by or the other animals that might wanna eat it or the aphids and the beetles uh, and the snails because it's maybe a, a thicker grass area. Um, the the uh, Or the varieties that don't have maybe as much of a scent, the garlic would be a great addition near those. Next, please. Now, garlic does have some issues. Um, it can be subject to nematodes, which are uh, small microscopic worms in the soil, uh, thrips, and onion flies and maggots. So there are some companion plants for garlic that help repel those things that attack it. So marigolds help repel nematodes, basil helps repel thrips, and together basil and garlic make a great pesto sauce, as Joanne said, she used hers. 
Um, rue has a strong scent as well, and it seems to repel onion flies and onion maggots. Uh, and then if you use sort of the lettuce-y groups, the spinach, arugula, and lettuce, they can help form a ground cover, cover and help prevent weeds, which will help your garlic grow a little bit better. Next, please. Um, there are some things that do not grow well with uh, 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 garlic, and it's because they either inhibit the growth uh, or they compete for equal resources. And examples of those would be beans like pole beans, peas, sage, uh, asparagus on the left, and parsley on the right. So if you're planting those, plant them further away from your garlic crop or some other things. Um, and because garlic also, if you plant garlic and onions and shallots all together, uh, it kind of becomes a bouquet or a uh, correction, a banquet for the um, onion flies and maggots. So it's better to plant those in alternating rows and have some of the companion plants in between so you don't give them such a, a resource for them to exploit. And next, please. So I also had covered some garlic, uh, how to grow, but Joanna did a fabulous job. So I think we can go on from that slide. She already covered it expertly. And so I have a list of resources. One of them uh, is on the Virginia Ex uh, Cooperative Extension site. If you search for garlic, you'll get a great, um, I think it's about a six page uh, PDF a document that has all the alliums, so onions, garlic, and shallots, and how to grow them in the seasons and that sort of thing. And there are some other ones on here. There was especially uh, garden.org had several uh, garlic uh, documents, and one was uh, a couple of them by uh, growers of garlic, commercial growers of garlic. One was in California, um, and let me see if I have his name. It was uh, Chester Aaron. And he has a large garlic farm in California. And so he had some great ideas of, you know, doing the raised beds and some other things. But, you know, just remember that's California weather and it's a little bit different than here, but some of the properties still apply. Um, there is a book, Roses Love Gar Garlic, which is companion planting for flowers. And um, then uh, you can see the rest of them there and look at the sources and find help to make you have a better garlic garden and the companion plants that go with it. Next, please. And at this point, I am happy to take any questions. No one's entered any in the chat box at this point. Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask? Lisa, I have a, um, a question about, uh, you know, it, the, the garlic doesn't like weeds because they compete with it for resources. Um, is there any, are there any special instructions for planting the uh, companion plants that do grow well with garlic in terms of spacing or around them, or is it are they just they just grow differently and they don't compete for the nutrients that that other weeds would? Well, from what I my understanding is that basically, I mean, weeds crowd into all of your plants, and so they block some of the sunlight, and they might take nutrients from the soil as well if they're because they grow so close to everything. And when you're planting the companion plants, usually you'll do a row for the garlic and then a row for whatever else. So you have a little bit of space in between to give them some light. Uh, and also if you maybe do a sort of a slightly, if you can do raised beds, that's great. If you can't, then maybe slightly dome the, uh, the ground around the row of garlic that you're gonna plant because that helps with the drainage because they do not like having uh, wet feet. I that see. can cause rot. Thank you. Sure. 